Hey Beer Two, this is Ryan here. Um, going to do a video review for you today. Um, thanks for all the comments. Um, encourage me to do a video review. Um, you can check out all my written reviews at beergeek, beergeeknation.com right now. Um, I'm going with the title of San Diego Beer Vlog is my channel name, although I plan on doing more than just San Diego beers, but um, I'll uh, focus on the San Diego and definitely the California beers that uh, a lot of you East Coasters can uh, get a hold of. Today I'm doing Stone Sublimely Self-Righteous Ale. This was uh, originally their 11th anniversary ale that apparently everyone liked so much that they decided to add it to their lineup. Um, apparently it's a year, a limit, what they call referred to as a limited year-round release, so they probably just brew it when they have the uh, tanks available. But um, this beer also has one of my favorite labels that Stone makes. Um, this uh, clocks in at 8.7% ABV and according to the website has 90 bittering units in it. So it's a huge beer, pretty much an imperial stout. ABV meets a uh, IPA, almost double IPA uh, IBUs. So. Uh, Let's crack this baby open. So I'm using my stone uh, Imperial Russian Stout giant snifter glass to pour this thing. And um, depending on where you go, the, you'll see this beer categorized as a black IPA, which is very much an oxymoron. Um, I think of it more as a, uh, a really hopped up porter or stout. And um, let's see, we got about a almost a one and a half, two finger, very uh, tan head. Um, this thing is very dark. Let me hold it up to the light. Um, just some. Uh, just some red around the edges, not a whole lot of light getting through this beer. Yeah, just very dark beer. Um, the website says that they're using uh, Chinook for uh, the bittering hops and they um, also add an Amarillo and Simcoe for flavoring and that's also what they use for the dry hopping of the beer. So. In other words, you're getting hops that you'll typically see in a IPA or double IPA beer. Um, so uh, let's get the smell on this thing. And yeah, you get your typical IPA smell right there. You just get some piney bitterness. You get a lot of grapefruit, um, Amarillo, Simcoe. I mean, those are like very citrusy. Um, hops, so you're getting a lot of citric uh, aromas coming off the nose. Uh, I'm not getting any alcohol on the nose at all. Um, not a whole lot of hops, that, or not a whole lot of malt going on there. Um, just the hops really dominate the, uh, the smell. As it warms up, I'm getting more of the, uh, the malt characteristics coming through on the nose. Anyway, head's fading pretty good as you expect with that alcohol percentage. Um, let's give it a taste. Cheers. Yeah, that's a very bitter beer right there. Um, 90 IBUs. I mean, you're not going to miss them despite the malt load that they have on this. I mean, you just get up front, you just get huge, huge amount of hops just hitting the front of your tongue. I'm getting like a, like a sour, a real sour, like grapefruit taste to it, um, mixed in with some, some pininess to it. Um, about midway through, you get some of the sweetness coming in with the malt, but um, there's so much hops that it's, it's not um, 
It's not taming the hops whatsoever. Um, this is probably the only, the second um, black IPA, whatever you want to call it. Um, I think Beer Advocate calls it American Strong Ale. Um, it's definitely hopped like some of the barley, American style barley wines out there. But this, you know, has more of a stout, um, porterish uh, malt finish than the barley wines where you get a lot of that kind of like dark fruits and um, a little more sweetness with the barley wine. But um, I had this on tap probably back in uh, 2008. They uh, first brewed it in 2007. Um, I think I had it on tap. I just remember just being, I love dark beers, so I tried this. And at the time, I, I had no idea, any knowledge that such a beer was out there, uh, you know, a dark beer meaning a uh, hoppiness of an IPA. So... I was just just blown away by the amount of hops in it and couldn't really get it past that the first time I tried it. But now that my palate's a little more developed, I like IPAs a lot more now. Um, I can uh, really start to appreciate this beer. So I'm going to try to get it to warm up a bit, try to get more of that malt flavor coming through. But um, it kind of has your typical stone finish on there. Um, just on the dry side is probably the, I think they use a, uh, an English yeast strain as their house yeast. And um, yeah, it just has that very dry finish to it. Nothing really lingering, just maybe a tiny bit of hops, but um, definitely makes you want to uh, take some more drinks. All right, I've let the beer warm up now. You get more of the malts coming through, but the hops are still very much present in this beer. Um, they go through the entire mouth feel. Um, the malt comes in midway through, kind of kind of towards the back of the tongue, gets a little bit of a, like a bitter chocolate flavor going, but the, uh, the malt base is very smooth. Um, it's just the hops are just completely dominating this beer. Um, which you kind of expect from Stone um, based on the other beers they've done. Um, but one thing I noticed with the style for the ones I've tried so far, the other one being the uh, Deschutes Hop in the Dark. Um, I did a written review of that. Um, it should be up on the uh, Beer Geek Nation website uh, at some point. Um, so you can read that. Um, that's my main reference for these uh, black IPAs or, um, I don't know, to me they're just stouts that are just hopped up. Apparently back in the day in England they uh, they had some really hoppy dark ales, um, and if you look through the uh, some of the style guidelines, you'll see back in the day. I mean, the style guidelines have changed for a lot of these beers. A lot of the porters and uh, stouts, the IBUs have dropped down, and even the alcohols dropped down to lower levels. But um, even warmed up, I still am not getting any of the alcohol uh, present on this. Very well hidden, um, which is also the case with the shoots. I think the main difference between this one and the shoots is the shoots, they say they use oats. I, I'm not sure about the grain bill on this one, but I'm not getting any oatmeal going on, so I don't think it's quite like an oatmeal stout. Um, maybe something more along the lines of uh, um, like a Baltic porter, something a little stronger um, stout qualities. But, um, just wrapping this up, um, it's a good beer. Um, I'll give it a B. Um, the the problem, the main problem I have with the style is, I don't know if it's maybe because it's the so much hops, but um, there's just not a whole lot going on in the the malt in. I always like a nice uh, either you know roasted notes just a little more present in the mouthfeel um, maybe a little bit of coffee or chocolate going on I don't know if they can get that in there but I haven't had any of that in these beers so uh, I guess they do lean a little more towards the IPA in that respect you don't get the the, the coffee and chocolate notes um, at least in the two beers that I've tried so anyway uh, comment subscribe um, check out the Beer Geek Nation website um, cheers